Good evening, everyone. This is Mayor Jerry Murphy, and welcome to the Sparta Township Council meeting of June 9th. We are now in session. This meeting was called to order at 6 o'clock local time. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided to the public and the press on January 8th, 2020, by delivering to the press and posting on the Township website a copy of the notice. Notice was provided to the public and press changing the meeting time to 6 p.m. local time on June 5th. Um, would the Township Secretary, uh, Clerk, I mean, please call the roll. Uh, Councilman Fiorello? I'm here. Uh, um, Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Uh, Councilman Smith? Here. Councilwoman Wildsmith? Here. I'm uh, Mayor Murphy. Here. Would you please join me in a salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'd like to open this session to the public for any items not on the agenda and I'd like to uh, say please speak clearly into your microphone because re we are recording this also please practice public meeting etiquette or you risk being muted when you are acknowledged state your name and address to be acknowledged raise your hand or use star nine on your phone I'll now open it up to the public Yes, Jerry, this is Jenny Erks, 27 Mile Pleasant Road. Um, just following up on a request that I had sent about the street signs, um, how many were purchased, how much did it cost, and was it because we were out of compliance? Did we need to meet some DOT requirements? Was there grant money? What can you tell me about that? Uh, Jan, if you would wait just a little bit, uh, the manager in his report can address that, if that's okay. satisfactory to you. If it's going to be those details, I can wait. Sure. Anybody else from the public? I see no hands raised. Seeing no hands raised. Uh, I'd like a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes held on May 12, 2020. So moved. May I have a second? I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. May I have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes held on May 26, 2020. So moved. May I have a second? Second the motion. Second. Molly, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Mr. Close, would you please give us your manager's report? Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll start off with uh, just a reminder about our annual recycling shredding event, uh, which is scheduled for Saturday, June 27th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. here in the lower level parking lot of Town Hall. Uh, all items collected from vehicles by employees will be wearing masks and gloves, again, in an effort to limit contact with residents slash property owners who are deciding to participate in this program. 
This is the design effort to help promote safety for all parties, the residents uh, that are participating, as well as the employees themselves. Notice of the event has been posted in various buildings, the website, the PD, and Township Facebook pages, and Twitter account. Uh, town hall safety improvements with the COVID-19. I'll just speak to that for a second. Uh, we reopened town hall to staff this week. Um, using proper social distancing protocols and some safety equipment that we put in place. Um, initially, we had anticipated opening uh, to the public in some uh, limited capacity on June, Monday, June 15th. Uh, this was in part subject to the installation of plexiglass shields partitions uh, that would be put up in the various office counters uh, so as to provide protection for both residents and employees during business transactions. Uh, this material was on back order, but we did receive some, and the DPW is in the process of installing it now. Uh, however, we do not have all of the material, so we'll have to evaluate where we are at the end of this week to determine whether uh, that's still feasible. Um, also, uh, we have to reevaluate the opening, given that the governor extended the state of emergency to July 6th, and also in conjunction with new directives that he just put out, some as recently as today. Uh, various other safety measures uh, are also being put in place to conduct business to the public. Uh, new disinfecting equipment used for doing countertops at the end of each day as well as mail. Um, and residents will be limited to one person at a counter at a time. Um, and employees will be uh, uh, you know, limiting themselves to use of employee bathrooms so that we keep the public bathrooms uh, separate and that we disinfect each accordingly at the end of each cycle. A day. Um, residents uh, will be encouraged to wear face masks when in town hall, but that's clearly their option, whatever makes them feel most comfortable in terms of their interaction. Uh, the brush drop off uh, from storm degree at the DPW yard that ended uh, as of May 29th. As you recall, this service option was made available to residents following the storm earlier this year. Uh, the number of residents that had used the facility for this purpose had dwindled to approximately five to seven per week or an average of about one a day. So at this point, the volume of use no longer warrants it being maintained as the service is available at the SCUMA facility in Lafayette. JCPNL distribution uh, d vegetation activity work. Um, we have been advised by JCPNL that on or about June 30th of this year, JCPNL contractors will be performing line clearance tree trimming work uh, in spot along their right of way out of the Herd Town substation, which is on the border of Lake Opacon and Sparta. Uh, so we will be posting information about that up as well. Property tax payments, uh, the extended grace period. Um, just as a follow up to the uh, action taken earlier this year by the council to support the recommended extension of the grace period for the second quarter property tax payments. Uh, I'm pleased to inform you that the collection rate for this year's quarter was 92.53% versus 91.56% for the same quarter last year. That compares June 2nd, which is the day through June 1st, through May 10th of, of, of last year. So it was an apples to apples comparison in that regard. So therefore, not only did we meet our percentage of collections from the prior year, but we, we exceeded it. So I want to commend Diane. O'Connor and her staff uh, for all their efforts uh, in this regard, as well as the residents um, you know, for assisting with the payments and making sure that they got through for the operations of all the entities, including the school. Tax appeal deadline, uh, just again a reminder that the uh, state of emergency uh, was extended by the governor. In conjunction with that, the date for tax appeals to be filed was moved back to July 1st. It's our understanding that that date will not be moved back any further at this point. Uh, so notice the date is on our website, social media platforms. Uh, so we just want to remind everyone that uh, of that date. Last year, the township had a total of 76 county tax appeals filed. To date this year, it's my understanding from Mr. Ferraris that we have a total of 63 that have been filed. But I would expect that we'll probably see that number increase between now and the filing deadline. And so we'll probably be at or about last year's um, numbers, I would think. 
uh, flag banner decorations. Uh, you know, as you saw, we put up the flag decorations on the light poles in Town Hall in conjunction with Memorial Day. They're going to remain up through the July 4th holiday and for the summer. Uh, the flags along the walkway at Town Hall are going to be placed up again in commemoration of Flag Day, uh, which is coming up this weekend. The Chief and I have been in uh, contact and discussions with Elks Lodge 2356 about Flag Day, and they're holding their annual ceremony. Uh, so we are looking uh, to work with them on holding some sort of condensed, smaller ceremony that will be in compliance with the governor's restrictions on social public gatherings here at Town Hall. Uh, the abbreviated ceremony um, um, would likely be held on Monday, June 15th. Uh, and again, as I said, there were some new directives put out today, so we have to, um, you know, evaluate those and uh, decide whether or not, you know, how, how many people we can get in uh, between the number of participants as well as those that uh, would be attendees. Uh, our drive-in movie. Uh, please report the township uh, has made arrangements for a drive-in movie to be held on the nights of Thursday, June 25th, Friday, June 26th, and Saturday, June 27th at dusk. The movies will be shown in the lower level parking lot of Town Hall. Uh, in addition to the movie, there's going to be music prior to the showing of the film. The, the movie will be frozen too. Audio will be available through FM stations so residents can stay in their cars safely and enjoy the movie. It's the first time we've undertaken uh, this type of event. And we're very excited about it. Uh, I'd be very commend Jean Monterano and her staff, particularly Allison Dini, uh, and Michael Dempsey, our IT director, for their efforts in assisting uh, with bringing this project to fruition for the community. Uh, residents must register for this event through Community Pass. It is on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, more information is available on our website uh, as well. Uh, I'm also pleased to report the clerk's office, which myself has been working with the general code for updating our township ordinances, and that they've informed us they've completed work that all the ordinances that were approved up through December 2019 have been updated and are now available on the website through a new link that has been posted by the webmaster. Camp Sacagawea, um, given the governor's recent directives about the ability to open summer camps, um, Ms. Monterano and her staff and I and the chief have been having conversations about reopening that and we're pleased to announce that registration is now open. Uh, residents only are authorized to register from uh, today through Sunday the 14th and take advantage of an early registration fee. Uh, after that date, registration will be open to non-residents as well. However, the discount for early registration will no longer be available after that point. Uh, so we do ask you to encourage you to register now. If you have questions, you can call the Sparta Recreation Department at 729-2383. Uh, operation of the camp is subject to there being a sufficient number of registrants to warrant holding it uh, logistically. So unless there's an objection from the council, we plan to move forward with this. Uh, in talking to Gene uh, and Allison, I think we feel confident we can uh, meet the governor's directives, uh, some of which just came out today uh, in terms of the guidelines um, and operate it uh, safely for uh, uh, campers and families within town. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, if there's any other questions, oh, um, uh, before I read my uh, report, I'm going to finish. Uh, Jen, you did ask me one question before I go to the chief. Could you just uh, repeat that, please? Sure, I was asking about the street signs. I had sent um, an email to you earlier last week. Um, just You had mentioned it twice in your reports yeah. in the last two meetings, so how many signs? Sure, sure. Jen, I'm sorry I missed that. Um, yeah. the, the number of street signs, I believe, is approximately 408 signs. Um, and I think the, we've got multiple quotes on it. I believe the final number was approximately $12,000. They're vandal proof. Uh, they are MUTCD compliant, um, which the old signs no longer were. So, um, you know, I think they were. I think they were a nice addition to the community, and I think uh, so far for, we've received some some good feedback from the community about the signs. Okay, um, MUTCD. Yeah, MUTCD. I can give you the. Uh, 
I can look it up. I just wanted to make sure I had the right acronym. Thank you. No, 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 no. Jen, hold on one second. Uh, Stan, if you're online, could you just uh, give Jen the uh, METC? I don't have that in front of me at the moment. Yes, it's the Manual of Uniform Construction, uh, Mu Manual of Uniform Construction Traffic Devices. Okay. Easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then my apology for uh, not getting that to you sooner. I didn't see it. Um, That's okay. Um, but so they were, um, were we, were, was this something that we needed, we were being told we had to do, or we just decided? No, we, initi we initiated it, Jen. Um, okay. The signs hadn't been replaced in quite a number of years, as I, I'm sure you, you saw and were aware. Um, so in looking at this, uh, I reviewed it with Stan. I had talked to Jim Zepp about this previously and updating our signs. And rather than do it in a piecemeal fashion, we decided to move forward with the project and do it at one time so that you know the entire community saw the benefit, benefit of it rather than having it done in some sort of staggered fashion. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, You're quite welcome. I also wanted to. Uh, Go ahead, I was going to say, before I finish, Mayor, uh, as, as I've been doing recently, I just want to uh, turn over to Chief Spitaletta. Now, we've been working uh, actively on um, the pandemic, the coronavirus, in terms of the impacts on the town with department heads, Chief and his head of OEM, and uh, as I've said before, has done an outstanding job with this. Uh, the directives as recently as today, the number that came out is uh, the amount of information and the number of things that have to be attended to um, is really, the volume is at times amazing to, to see and try to digest and get implemented within communities, including our own. Um, one of which you'll see on tonight, which was a, uh, which is the outdoor dining, which is an effort we all worked on. Uh, Stan, our land use administrator, our, our town attorney, Mr. Ryan, our planning board attorney, Mr. Collins, our zoning board attorney, Mr. Keynes. Uh, there was a lot of contributors to uh, the resolution tonight and the form that we uh, finished this afternoon it was updated to include um, a county directive which came out uh, late this afternoon. So I want to commend all those folks for their efforts in bringing that about, uh, which will you know begin tomorrow for those businesses that want to employ outdoor dining starting next Monday. Uh, which is when the period opens up for them to do that. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to the Chief and let the Chief talk in detail uh, about uh, a number of items um, that we've been working on in relation to the COVID. And uh, thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, Jen, just as a reminder, too, it's very appropriate this year because it's our 175th anniversary. So the signs that were ordered uh, kind of go along with the our somewhat muted celebration. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to the Chief. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Town Council, Mr. Close, and uh, the Sparta residents that uh, are joining us this evening. Uh, I'm going to start on the uh, COVID front and, you know, report some good news um, that the decline in reported COVID cases in Sparta Township is, is heading that trend, is, is continuing to go downward. So it's a positive trend that we, we certainly hope continues and we believe will with all of us working together as we have been and abiding by the latest safety and health recommendations that has come from the experts. Uh, the Sparta community has strived to work and support each other together to get through this pandemic and we must continue to be cognizant and aware of how best we can maintain the encur these encouraging numbers and continue with this downward trend. As Mr. Close stated, as the executive orders continue to allow for more activities and people to congregate, we at Sparta Township continue to stay abreast of these adjustments and guide businesses, schools, and all others to what is held within the parameters of these executive orders as they loosen up. As time goes on, we're heading towards fewer restrictions, and we here at Sparta Township, of course, would, would like nothing more to see things go back to, to normalcy as everybody else. But we want to do so, of course, in a, self, uh, in a safe and healthy way. As I mentioned last week, um, and everybody's seeing this, certainly, we're seeing a lot more activity on our roadways. Uh, so these roadways need to be shared safely with our walkers, joggers, bikers, drivers, and uh, whoever else is, is using our roadways. We're seeing this quite a bit. We ask, of course, um, that our drivers uh, operate within the speed limit, and we even encourage slower speeds when you see this amount of volume out on the roadways being utilized. We're out there consistently 
uh, the police force uh, monitoring our roadways throughout the township. It's, it's a large township, so we try to get over the, all over the place and, and, and enforce uh, these speed limits and, and make sure safety is paramount. Uh, I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to thank uh, Councilman Smith and our CERT team for their um, going over to the county and, and helping out with the testing process over there, their volunteerism, uh, their dedication. Uh, th this team has, has certainly helped us throughout the years since it's been uh, started. So we rely on them and uh, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, lastly, on, on, the, on the COVID uh, aspect, I just want to again say that the Sparta com community has continued to show its strength in so many ways. We as first responders appreciate once again everything that's been done for us has been donated to us, and we continue to stay true to our mission. The other topic I'd like to touch on um, is a statement that I put forth last week through Mrs. J uh, Jen Derricks and Tap into Sparta, and I know Freehold de Hertzberg um, put out a statement as well as, as, well as the uh, Newton Police Chief, and I think it's important uh, to read into the record this evening. The recent incidents and police actions that resulted in the death of George Floyd were simply despicable. These former officers will be held accountable for their actions or lack thereof. Their response goes completely against the training, protocols, and code of ethics that we as officers have taken and the oath we are sworn to abide by. Their actions in no way reflect on the officers of the Sparta Police Department, the vast majority of the police officers in this state and across our nation. We continue to be committed to our oath and mission, which is to protect and serve our community and those we interact with. Even in the most difficult circumstances, we will continue to be professional and police with empathy and compassion. This has been embedded in all aspects of our continual training and is ingrained in the very fiber of our agency and what we stand for. This will not change, even in light of recent disturbing violent and criminal acts that have taken place across our nation. As officers, we are entrusted with certain powers to protect others. However, first and foremost, we are citizens. As such, in conjunction with everybody else, we respect and support the rights of others and stand for them as well. We respect the right to protest or demonstrate in a peaceful and law-abiding fashion. Unfortunately, many of these demonstrations or protests have attracted criminal organizations that have infiltrated these peaceful protests causing them to erupt into a continued pattern of violence and destruction across the country. This pattern has had a horrific impact on our nation with many lives lost, people injured, and property, property destroyed. Our residents and parents need to know this information should they or their children be considering attending any one of these demonstrations. At the Sparta Police Department, we remain committed to our community and look forward to better times ahead when we get back to what we did best before the COVID pandemic to provide the best community relations through the many events and functions that we have throughout the year, interacting with the people we serve, our residents, our businesses, our students, our children, and our entire Sparta Strong community. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Chief. And based on your statement, I think it appropriate at this time to take a moment of silence to acknowledge the tragic death of George Floyd and pray that the civil unrest in our country will come to an end and that healing will begin. I hope that we as a people will use this time as an opportunity to transform our country and start a meaningful dialogue to address inequalities and live up to the highest ideals that this country was founded upon. For all persons that I and others fought and died for, we are now taking a moment of silence. Thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor Quinn, uh, would you uh, make a motion to approve the expenditures? Um, if I may, Mayor, I'd like to first make a motion that we accept the manager's report and the chief's report 
both as presented. Okay. Can I have a second to that? I'll second that. All right. Sorry, David. Dave, uh, seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Chris. And now. Uh, ne right. I move, uh, Mayor, that we approve the bill list in the amount of $1,143,729.60 fund permitting. Uh, may I have a second? Second the motion. Thank you, Molly. Uh, uh, Kate, would you uh, have a roll call vote on this, please? Councilman Tiara? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. And Mayor Murphy. Yes. Thank you. And Kate, would you also please read the title of Ordinance 20 08? A bond ordinance, a bond ordinance appropriating $754,000 and authorizing the issuance of $254,000 in bonds or notes for their various water utility system improvements. This is an introduction of ordinance. May I have a second? I move that we introduce ordinance 20-8. Okay. And I'll second that, Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Got a little out of sequence You're welcome. there. Um, may I have a roll call vote? Uh, Councilman Chiro? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilwoman Wilson? Yes. And Mayor Murphy? Yes. All right, Kate, would you also read the title of Ordinance 20 07? An ordinance appropriating the total sum of $2.2 million from General Capital Improvement Fund for funding various capital improvements. All right, this is a hearing on the ordinance, possible adoption. I'm going to open it up to the public for any comment. I have a question. This is Jenny Derricks. Go ahead, Jen. Um, could we have some explanation? This also was in my email of some of the items that will be covered under this general capital expenditure, the $2 million, the $2.2 million. Uh, yeah. From You're right. Uh, yes. Uh, would our CFO like to uh, make a comment on that, please? Uh, yes. Uh, approximately... 1.1 million of that money will be for the improvements of roads uh, with, with overlays. Um, that's up a little bit um, from the money that we had in the last year's. Uh, part of that is the township share, uh, uh, which is approximately 50,000, um, the township share of a DOT grant that we have to match. And that is. Uh, that's that's the roads part of it. There's approximately another four hundred thousand that is for roads equipment, including dump trucks uh, and any other various equipment that um, the PW needs. Um, another four hundred thousand is for parks improvements. That's for uh, stuff that is needed, including the um, bridge and, and the bridge down at. Um, the extra field over the Walker River. Um, the pavilion or the shed that is going to go behind the um, Parks Department garage over at Station Park for storage of equipment, and that's been setting outside. And also, I believe there was a purchase of a 
uh, pickup truck in that for, for the uh, parts department. Um, and there is approximately $70,000 in for fire equipment, and I believe there was another $70,000 in for improvements down in the police station, which uh, I believe part of that was uh, the upgrade of the squad room and, and also the, uh, the uh, restrooms down at the police station and showers. And that pretty much takes up the uh, you know, full amount. There, there is uh, an additional amount in there for building and grounds to supplement work that we're doing at the, uh, at the town hall this year. Great, thank you. I just, Sam, if you don't mind, I just had a quick question. When we spoke about the budget, um, there was talk that um, the DOT had released the grant money information early so that money could be included in the budget, uh, I believe that was would have been able to come in as revenue rather than have to go through the ordinance process, um, delaying the start of the road improvements. So this one point, yeah, yeah, that yeah. no, that's that's a separate one. The that amount is also in the budget for the for the grant. Um, it's under a, a capital. It's it's in the budget underneath capital. It's a separate appropriation. Okay, it would be spent. So there'll be more than 1.1 .1 spent on the roads. It's just that this is the right. part of the ordinance. Of that 1.1 .1 that's there is our beginning of the, uh, of the grant. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions from the public? And just as a reminder, would you please raise your hand when you're asking a question? All right, seeing no hands raised, I'd uh, like to bring it back to council for any discussion or comments on this ordinance. All right, uh, seeing none, we have a motion to adopt ordinance 20 07. I move that we adopt ordinance 20 07 as presented. May I have a second? I will second it. Okay, Dan. Um, okay, you may have a roll call vote, please. Councilman Tiarello? Yes. Deputy Mayor Corn? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilwoman Wallace Smith? Yes. And Mayor Murphy? Yes. Okay, thank you all. Uh, now open it up to the public for any resolution on the agenda. That would be 8-1 through 8-7. Yes, we have an individual with his hand raised. I will unmute. His microphone is unmuted. Okay, uh, go ahead. There's one gentleman or lady from the public. Yes, hello, uh, good evening everyone. This is Dean Blumetti, I'm at 15 Water's Edge. Um, I have a question about resolution 8.2, um, which is about the um, agreement for shared services. I would just like to ask if you could please provide a briefly, a little bit more context or details around that. And also, is there a cost to the township associated with it? Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll have our CFO answer that question for you. Thanks. Uh, yes, uh, basically that agreement is for the uh, treasurer of school monies for Hardison Board of Education. Um, I do that throughout my normal work day. It's uh, basically I have to do their bank reconciliations and certify their um, cash accounts once a month. Uh, usually it takes me in the area of about hour and a half to two hours and it's it's you know part of my normal work day and the township gets reimbursed for that okay thank you very much appreciate it okay You're welcome thank you sam anybody else from the public 
Okay, thank you, Sam. Is there anybody else from the public on any resolution on the agenda? Uh, seeing none, I'd like a motion to adopt resolutions 8-1 through 8-7. I move that we adopt resolutions 8-1 through 8-7. Okay, thank you, Molly. Uh, second, please. I'll second. second. Oh, go ahead, Dave. All right, uh, Councilman Smith, a second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilman Schwab? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Uh, Mayor Murphy? Yes. Uh, did we skip somebody? And I vote yes. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Uh, Sorry. I, no problem. I didn't know at this time um, if our manager wanted to comment on any uh, resolution they've already been passed but expand on 8-5 okay uh, seeing not uh, uh, it, it's pretty self-explanatory and it opens up the door literally for our businesses to reopen. It takes effect, uh, I believe, on June 15th. All right, moving on to council liaison updates, uh, starting with Councilman Chiarello. Um, yeah, I have, I have one thing I'd like to bring up today. Um, the, uh, I want to mention that the Environmental Commission meeting was um, supposed to meet this week on Thursday to review a planning board application. Um, that meeting was canceled because uh, we have one designated person to run all the Zoom meetings and that person wasn't available that evening. And so uh, uh, rather than identify an alternate, the meeting was canceled. Um, the commission had that one application to review and so the review is going to take place offline via email um, outside of the public view. Um, <clears throat> let me get some more hands here. So I had some question. Uh, I asked our legal counsel to clarify this. Um, so I did um, I have an email exchange with, uh, with Tom. And um, Tom, you know, keep me honest here if I misrepresent anything that uh, what I understood was that advisory boards <clears throat> that are non voting and have no spending authority are not bound by the Open Public Meetings Act. And so this includes the Environmental Commission, Recreation, Economic Development, Culture and Arts, Library, Senior. I think that might be it. Um, uh, so that means that at, at any time we can make a change to this meeting, we could remove it from public view and conduct business offline, and, and we would be um, in compliance uh, with that with that Open Public Meetings Act. Um, so that was interesting to learn that. Um, yeah, just to confirm, Councilman Chair, that, that that's essentially correct. I think uh, the inquiry had been whether um, under the Open Public Meetings Act there was a requirement uh, that the Environmental Commission comply with uh, with the Act, and as I advised you uh, and the Township, um, while they certainly can voluntarily do so, uh, it is not a requirement of the law for a um, a committee such as the Environmental uh, uh, Committee uh, to uh, to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, and that's. Yeah, that's pursuant to statute, I believe it's uh, 10 colon 4 dash 8 uh, A and also case law that's interpreted the law. So thank you um, for the clarifying that. So does that also mean, for example, that <clears throat> if the Environmental Commission has uh, a particularly contentious matter to review, that the Commission can then elect to take that offline and rather than conduct it off of public view, can we? Yeah, so I, I, you know, they of course would be providing input to the, well, uh, they, they may be providing input to the planning board, and the uh, planning board, of course, would uh, is subject to the uh, Open Public Meetings Act, and um, if they engaged in any discussion of, uh, uh, of that content, that would be subject to the law. Uh, but 
Yeah, correct. Uh, the the Environmental Commission is not subject to uh, to the requirements of uh, OPMA. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank, thank you, Mr. Um, Ryan. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so um, I mean, I, I brought this up in, in past meetings. Um, uh, I, I'm an advocate of keeping the public informed about about our meetings. Um, we talk, I've talked about this several times, and um, and it, it's not about gotchas. I, it's just for me about doing what I think is right. So, uh, I would like us as an organization to to do things like you know, if if we normally conduct business in public, that we do it that way every time. Um, that if we move a public meeting, you know, maybe take it virtually. That we that we tell people about it. You know, if the meeting's canceled, that we that we inform people that the meeting's canceled. Um, and you know, if, if if we hold a public meeting and there's a board secretary to record minutes, that we make those available on our website. And again, I think that's just the right thing to do. Um, um, Dan, if this is relating to environmental, then I would recommend that um, you bring that back through the chairman of the Environmental Commission and align with him as to moving forward how he plans to, um, you know, to handle this. I think, and I did, um, but it's more than just the Environmental Commission, it's just in general that, you know, um, as I mentioned in the past, you know, we've had um, meetings canceled um, without providing uh, what I thought was, you know, um, notifications. Uh, we moved meetings offline that are uh, uh, that were normally conducted, uh, or that the website said that we were meeting in person. Uh, and it just, um, I, I, like I said, I'm sensitive to that. I think we should uh, be as open with the public as, as we can. Okay, thank you. Your your point is well taken, Dan. Uh, do you Thanks. so having not held a meeting, you don't have any update for the environmental. Do you have any others? I do not. Um, okay, moving on, uh, <laughs> Councilman Smith. No meetings. Thank you. Uh, I do have a library meeting tomorrow um, just to go over some steps in as to how they're going to be open and, and the steps they're going to be following. And they do post uh, their minutes um, and they'll be posting their process for reopening on the library website. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Wildsmith. We have had no meetings. Deputy Mayor Quinn. So just an update with regard to the um, health liaison uh, report. So um, the good news we received today from Jim McDonald, it looks like the well child clinics will be resuming on Tuesday, June 16th at the Wheatsward campus. Um, so appointments can be scheduled there. Um, so it's nice to really see that um, that that we're we're very slowly but but steadily moving moving back towards um, you know looking outside of the COVID crisis with the health department and getting back to some of the other services that are really needed. Um, so that I wanted to share that. Also, we did have a planning board meeting um, uh, this past week. There were two approvals for construction at Aaron Way, one being a thirty thousand square foot roughly a warehousing facility and also a new business building. Uh, we also did hold a virtual recreation meeting. So um, we did a quick review of everything that had been going on since we hadn't had a chance to meet since February. Um, we then got a great status update from the rec department with regard to all the different great programs that they've been doing. And then we kicked around some ideas um, based on the, the change, you know, like now we're sort of in a different environment and uh, where there's some ideas and whatnot. So um, we don't really have any concrete ad, um, advice at this point. The, uh, as you know, it's an advisory board. Um, Councilman Smith and I um, are co-liaisons to that board and the, the information goes from the board itself to the director of recreation, Jean, and then, um, you know, she, she's responsible for bringing it forward. So we don't really have anything concrete. We just really wanted to reconnect. And uh, we will be having another meeting uh, hopefully next month before we break for the summer. Um, also, just an, um, an update, um, the Census Planning Leave of, of Municipalities meeting will be on, um, will be coming up this week. And so I just want to let everyone know you'll be getting an updated invitation um, with a modification. So be on the lookout for that later tonight. But that will be happening 
And so we're, we're really excited about that. That is my update for right now, Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the EDC uh, met, and I've invited former Mayor Josh Hertzberg, uh, who is also co-chair of the EDC, to uh, just give you a brief update. Josh, you're on. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, we, uh, we thought it was important to meet and talk about reopening strategies and things that might be appropriate to, uh, from a township perspective to help these businesses as they try and get reopened and get back to work. Um, some of the things that were brought up by members of the committee were loosening of certain township regulations such as signage, outdoor dining, um, you know, some of the things we talked about, you know, were the county health department and what their restrictions were. As the town manager, Mr. Close, had spoke to earlier, the county did announce um, that they were going to have a temporary approval for outdoor dining, suspending certain restrictions that were going to go from June 15th to December 31st, not counting um, other township restrictions. Come to find out that the township was already working on certain things like that. Also, um, thanks to Janice and Maureen, who did a little research, they found out that the businesses would be able to do extra signage for a period of approximately 47 days to let people know that they're open, just to you know help them in this time to make sure that everybody knows which restaurants are opening, who can, you know, what businesses they can go to, and I think some of these things are going to help them as they reopen. Um, I know that uh, we're still working on a few things. We're going to try and meet next week again to finalize all of it and then maybe put it together and uh, send it up to you guys. Um, I just want to also say one thing. I want to thank uh, the chief for his words. I think that was an important statement he made at an important time. One of the things, having grown up here in this town, seeing the dramatic change in our police department, the, a dramatic change for the good. and. You know, I just want to thank the chief for his leadership, the amount of time and effort he puts into community policing, um, you know, be it just the attitude that comes down from, from the top down to the time that the officers take serving the children ice cream and, and starting that, that attitude from a, a young age. It really has made a big difference in our township. So not only are we one of the top 10 safest towns, we are also one of the towns where, where the kids still look up to the police because they're, they're great role models, and that, that's, uh, that's something I think we can all be proud of. Thank you, Josh. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, just to add to what Josh said, the County of Sussex, in conjunction with the Sussex County Chamber of Commerce and the Sussex County Economic Development Committee, uh, create a business status interactive mapping system that can be found online at the county website and or the Sussex County Chamber of Commerce website. Um, anybody out there that's listening that has a, a business might want to check that out and populate it if you can. Uh, yeah, could... uh, Mayor, I'm sorry, I got, I got a little excited, forgot about that part. Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh... It, you know, as they were developing, I was I was getting sneak peeks of it. It's a really really great tool, not only for all the citizens but for all the businesses. It's basically an application that's going to going to include a lot of crowdsourcing information to let people know which businesses are open, who has curbside pickup, who has, is by appointment only. It's going to include a lot of parameters. Um, it was really great teamwork between the county and the Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Partnership of the county. Um, they did a great job on this, and I, and I hope we can uh, get it out to as many people and get as many businesses putting their information here as possible so people know where to go. Okay. Thank you, so, Josh. Thank you again, Mayor. Okay. Thank you for coming aboard. Uh, that concludes liaison updates. We'll now go to old business, uh, starting with Councilman Chiarello. Um, yeah, I've got uh, two things to bring up, thanks. Um, uh, one is, and I, I brought this up in meetings before, um, about uh, uh, this meeting again requires that a, we have a password protection on the meeting. Listen, uh, bring, Dan, Dan, Dan we, have again, rehashed because, uh, we have rehashed this. We have rehashed this time and time again. Meeting. 
Dan, and, and with all, yes. uh, I'm going to call a point of order on this because we have rehashed this a number of times. So would you move on to another subject, please? Okay, well, I would like to make a motion that we discontinue the practice of using passwords to protect our public meetings, unless that password is also provided in the required 48-hour notice. Well, um, uh, no, there, there Mayor, will be no comment on it. Mayor, that. if I may, Ms. Mayor, if I may, um, actually the president of Zoom has actually published a statement encouraging every user to make sure that they protect their meetings. We've also learned from our colleagues and our neighbors that by not password protecting these meetings, um, it is a reality that they will get bombed. Additionally, it's industry standard. And also, and finally, the meeting password is not designed, as you know, Dan, because we've had this conversation, to keep good people out. It's designed to keep the bad actors out. We are very transparent with the password. The password is the, in this case, is published in the agenda. It has been published in local um, publications such as TAP and NISPARTA before. So it is not that you have to go through a lot of work. It is the equivalent of when you go to any other website and it says, I am not a robot, and you have to put it in. We are not, we have seen more people attending with the password and we have never ever had and suffered what some of our neighbor uh, councils have that have opted not to use the passwords. So based on industry standard, I have sheets and sheets of reference I am happy to supply to you. I know that you also are in the IT world, so I'm not understanding um, why we continue to have this conversation but I am happy to provide you with the information from industry standards everywhere that recommend a password. Well, and honestly, Mayor, yeah. I've been in, I, I do this all day long, every day. I do not recommend that we ever do a meeting without a password. We are being very transparent with our passwords and they are even published in the agenda. Okay, so honestly, my, my, I believe that we should keep our meeting secure and I do not support not moving ahead without a password. Okay, so it's not the uh, industry standard. Well as so far is, as far as the motion, motion goes, uh, there's like no second that, to the um, motion. Excuse me, Dan. Excuse me, Dan. Excuse me, Dan. I think I have the floor. As far as the motion goes, if there's no second, it dies. All right. So I second it. Who did? All right, so Mayor, um, my name is Terry. No, no, it, it's got to be somebody from council. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like a little further discussion if you don't mind. No, Mayor. actually, Molly, I'm going to shut the discussion off. I call the point of order, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, that's so the wait, that's the end of it. That's the end of it, Molly. This week? No, if it's any discussion regarding. The password, that's final. We're done. So we're moving on. I think on. that you should be aware of the communication, and we should share any communication that we receive, Jerry. If you're asking that I don't, then I will not, but I'm just trying to um, share that information, uh, just as a point of discussion. No, we're done I discussing. Would like to I, I would like to uh, excuse me a point of, honestly, a point of order I would please like to make a motion that we move no. forward until further notice with a password no. to keep uh, our meeting secure that no. we use a password. excuse me excuse me I, I'm going to wrap the gavel but you'll never hear it we are done discussing any password for a zoom meeting end of discussion right now moving no, on motion if there's a second then we vote on it N no I'm yeah. going no, there, there was a motion, there was no second. Or I think maybe you could ask the attorney to roll in on No, I no, I know what the protocol is, Molly. Okay, so um, there is no vote. second to the Let's motion, do a roll it dies. Call vote, Jerry, please, because that's the point of order. No, the, the point, point of order, order I call. There is a second and a motion. The point of order, I believe, Tom, is to vote. We have well, a first that, and a second. Well, I, Mr. Mayor, you're, you're certainly chairing the, uh, the meeting, and I appreciate the points that you're raising, but if you have a member of council who's made a motion and then there is uh, subsequently 
a second to that motion, then you should move on to a, a vote uh, of the motion. Correct, but there was no that second. Earlier that uh, with the original motion from Councilman Chiarello that there was no second. Now we've had a, a another subsequent motion offered by Councilwoman Quinn, and I believe it was seconded. Um, and if so, then you should move on to a vote. Uh, Councilman Mossmith, can you clarify which motion you seconded? I seconded the motion that we have no passwords for meetings. And that's the motion of Councilwoman Quinn, is that correct? No, no, that, that is not the motion. The original motion, the original motion was from Mr. Chiarello. I wanted to share a piece of communication from a member of the public, um, but the mayor did not want me to share that. I thought that that would impact my council colleagues, and if so, if we're in the middle of a motion in a second, I just simply wanted there to be a public vote on the matter. And the reason I seconded the motion was, in fact, so that we could have a vote on the matter. Okay, so let me clarify. So you are seconding, you, you were trying to second Councilman Chiarello's motion? Correct, Mr. Ryan. Thank you. Okay. Then, Mr. Mayor, I, I'd, I'd recommend you move on to a, a vote following any discussion amongst the council. So maybe right, have I, that discussion. All right. What, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Ryan, I agree. I did not. I called for a second. I did <clears> not get it. But uh, now that Councilwoman Wildsmith is seconding Mr. Chiarello's motion, I'd like Kate to have a roll call vote. I, I thought we were going to have a discussion on that. No, we discussed it. It's the end of the discussion, Dan. This is old, oh, old matters. It's not really, um, Mayor, because I received an email on Thursday, May 28, which is subsequent to our last council meeting and prior to today's, from the past president of the Sparta Women's Club, who was advocating on behalf of the council regarding um, our Facebook post, who was concerned someone was concerned about the password protection and not understanding all the rationale behind that so i said that i would make the point to make sure that my council colleagues understood um so there is conversation about the password protection so i understand what points are being made pertaining to it but we need to communicate the points better to the public because there is a, per a perception now that the meeting is protected by the password, but not an understanding of the rationale. And if I may say, I agree with you 100%, Molly, and unfortunately that's, I believe, as a result of some of the way that it has been communicated. Right. So, so I, I'm, I'm uh, of the emotion, I am of the opinion that we are very <laughs> transparent. Um, I was never asked any opinion on it formally, but I am happy to, you know, I think that the as a council, we should put together a statement so that people fully understand and we can provide links to all the documentation from the industry standards and we can certainly uh, enunciate and communicate what I said before with regard to the fact that this is not a strong password. This is the, you know, it's very easy to get it and I am very happy for us to make that comment. I will not, however, though, support us moving forward without one. So I am happy to, if we as a council decide that we want to publish our own statement so that it is clear and we post it so that people understand it, I'm fine with that. Unfortunately, I think the way this has been presented to people in the past, this is now why, it, because it's, it's been presented that we're trying to keep them out. And that is absolutely not the case whatsoever. So. So I would like to offer that I had a conversation with the state, uh, with the League of Municipalities, uh, State League of Municipalities uh, attorney this afternoon, uh, and that person told me that he or she had never heard that of any other municipality that has the same requirement in the state that you had to call to get a password or email to get a password. That's it, not accurate. That, I'm sorry. Uh, the person said that there are some towns that do require passwords, but in his or her experience, that that is only employed when there are bandwidth limitations. And in each instance where a municipality does require a password, that password is always included in the meeting notice. So it's provided up front, not required for, uh, to be out of band. Yeah, who's the uh, staff? The person, the, agenda. Sorry, the person went on to say that that person is not in a position to provide legal counsel. 
There you go. And to not say that this is in violation of the Open Public Meetings Act, but that person did make a point to say it certainly violates the spirit of that. Well, maybe you should talk to our colleagues on either side of us that have had meetings that have been, um, you know, that, that where they've had big issues. And so again, it's not a strong point? password. That's and what is the point, sorry. Dan? This is the I'm industry sorry. standard, and we are not not I'm presenting sorry. or not providing a password. We are not locking people out, and I, I wish that you would stop spinning it like that, because that is simply not accurate. We are very transparent. Excuse me. I think I'm talking, Dan. My turn now. That was a gavel. I am calling a point the of order. Because it is not fair. Because Deputy that Mayor, is not what we are doing at all. Deputy Mayor, I am calling a point of order. We have other password protected, and they have had pornography and everything else. We don't, we don't want that in our meetings. I, I am calling another point of order. We have discussed this ad nauseum. We have, I have called for a roll call vote on the motion. Deputy uh, Mayor, or, uh, please, um, yes, thank you, Kate. You may, Mr. Mayor, Go you ahead. want to clarify for the record exactly what the motion is so that everyone understands what they're voting on? Well, if they don't know by now, uh, Councillor, I feel sorry for us. So the motion that I made was that we discontinue the practice of using passwords to protect access to public meetings unless that password is also provided in the required 48-hour advance notice. And that was seconded by Councilwoman Wildsmith, and I call for yes, a roll call sir. vote. Uh, Kate, would you proceed with the roll call? Uh, Council Chiarella? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Councilman Smith? No. Councilwoman Wildsmith? No. Mayor Murphy? No. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Smith, your liaison updates, if any? Or I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, it's all okay. business. I'm sorry. I'd like to further make a motion that we communicate our rationale to the public to justify the use of the password. I, I think I'll we can do this. That. I think we can do this administratively. I don't think we need a motion. I think I made a motion, and we have a second on the floor, Mayor. All right. Well, I think I think we, I, I like that. I think if we even put it on our website, you know, uh, one of the banners or something, um, I, I would have no problem with that. Okay, Kate, so would you call a roll call? Ready for a roll call vote? Yeah, I call for one. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Okay, I'll tell you in your row. So can somebody clarify what exactly is the motion uh, that's on the floor? Um, uh, listen, uh, Molly made a motion similar to what I was representing before, which is that we will put together our own statement explaining to the public how, what, in what regard the password is used, where they can find the password, and the rationale behind it. We will administratively work with the manager and the chief to put that statement together and post it on our pages. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Chiarello? No. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilman Wildsmith? Yes. And Mayor Murphy? No. Moving on. Councilman Smith? Any no, I still have one more um, old, uh, um, old business to bring up. Go ahead. Not related to passwords? May I do so? Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I've raised this in a couple of meetings before. Um, Section 5 of Ordinance 2000 -00 -00 requires that we issue a report of the, that the council issues a, issues a report if no property is acquired from the open space funds in the previous five years. Uh, we have not purchased any property with this fund since 2002, and we have never produced such a report. I raised this in the November 26th meeting, uh, again in the May, May 12th meeting, and um, I'm raising it again now, and I'm wondering what is the disposition of this report. 
I don't know that we can give you a disposition on this report at this time, but uh, thank you for your comments, and we'll look into it. So, um, when you, so you mentioned we'll look into it, and on the May 12th meeting, you, you mentioned that we'll take it under advisement. Um, who, who is the we that you speak of? Well, myself, the council, and the manager. So, when the council's here, can we advise on it now? We will so, take so, it. So, let me back this up. So, here's why this is important, right? So. Um, so we collect, you know, uh, unlike general municipal tax, we collect open space tax for a specific purpose, and that is to acquire open space property. Just like library tax is a separate item, it's a bit of use for a specific purpose. And to guide this act was, you know, to, 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 to guide this, our code allow, uh, requires us to develop and maintain an open space plan. And that plan hasn't been updated since 1997. And that 1997 plan consisted of just a, a simple list of nine properties on a single sheet of paper, so it really wasn't even a plan. Uh, and to date, we've only used those funds to purchase that one property, and that was back in 2002. So in the past 17 years, we haven't purchased any property with that fund. And, it, and it's uh, just so that it was clear that the tax is only supposed to be used for land acquisition, the ordinance also had an oversight function requiring the council to issue a report if no property has been purchased in the past five years. As I mentioned to date, we've never issued that report, and that's the report I'm seeking. So, so, so Dan, the concern I'm raising is that uh, we're, we're collecting taxes without a plan for how to spend it. We're not using that tax money for the express purpose of that fund, and we're ignoring the oversight activity put in place to monitor the use of those taxes. And I just don't think it's a good way to manage that fund. Well, I just want to be clear because we've had this conversation also many different times. So as you are aware, it is for more than just acquisition or purchase of open space funds. We have used those funds, as you know. I don't know why, you know, that's not, you know, why you would say that, because clearly we have to benefit this community. And I have notified you as well that the planning board was also looking into this. Um, so we have been under a little bit of a pandemic lately. And so this went to the bottom a little bit of what we have been focusing on. So I think that when things right themselves and we are in a better place to be able to look and focus outside of health and safety of the residents, then we could take it back up and we'll bring it back to the planning board and the council for a path forward. So what, so about the, the, Thank the you, report, Deputy Mayor. Um, are we gonna, I said, I, well, so how about this? Um, how about, uh, since this is a council function to produce the report, um, I'll produce the report and we can bring it up for discussion in the next meeting. No, it's not up no, to you. It's no, not up to you. this is not for a council person. We had this discussion last time that we were going to direct, to direct the council to discuss directing the manager. This is not a report that is unilaterally created by somebody on the board. We already talked about this, Dan. Right, and the, and the, the, the ordinance says that the council has to produce the report. The, the council, council discussion, excuse me, said, said that on May 12th, said the council could rely on the manager to produce the report, um, and the council could adopt that report that produced the manager. But the council, we didn't say that only the manager can produce the report. It's a council report. Um, and so um, I, uh, any one of us could produce this report, but it doesn't make it unilaterally. We don't need we to rush. To, we don't me. need to rush this report right now, in my opinion. He's, he's we have other years. things that we need to handle, and order. we've already discussed it. It's on the radar. I, again, think that we need to focus on getting our businesses reopened, getting our community safely back to where it was before this pandemic, before we, I mean, yes, having this report, we're not disagreeing with you, Dan. We're disagreeing. I am disagreeing. I'll speak for myself with your timeline. So I, I, we took it under advisement. We said as a council we were going to discuss it at a later point and discuss it with the manager. That's what we agreed to at the last meeting. We have a lot going on right now. We need all of our resources focused, in my opinion, in getting our community and its residents back and stable so right now. That back in November last year, right? That's fine, Dan. My, my opinion is a member of council does not unilaterally go and do this. This oh, information needs to come from, well, you're saying that you're going to create it. I can. And I'm yeah, saying, of course. okay, well, why would, why would we not bring this back? As I have told you numerous times, the planning board is also looking at this. 
So they're an advisory board as well. It seems like we should be not working against each other. It, it really feels like we should wait till the right time and then move forward and collaborate. I don't understand what you're talking about. You're talking about the report? I'm talking about the path forward with regard to the report and how it's going to be created. This is not something that you could just go out on the computer and Google it. This is There's a report that goes behind this. It's a property. If I had let me read the, the ordinance. It says, in the event that no property is acquired under this section for a period of five consecutive years, this is um, Article uh, 11, 2.61.5, the township shall issue a report with recommendations and conclusions concerning the trust fund. That's the report I'm talking about, not an open space. Okay. Plan. No, it's, okay. It's the ordinance you're talking about. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I get, this is uh, uh, Tom Ryan speaking, the township attorney. I just want to clarify one point, and, and I think uh, uh, the speakers are all on the same page at this point, but while it is the responsibility of council, uh, no individual council member has the authority to issue such a report. So I just want to... What was I suggesting? Sure, we, we all understand that. No, no individual member of council uh, has the authority to act on their own to issue such a report. That is correct. Right. I mean, if they issue, um, that doesn't mean the same thing as drafting one for the report for the council to look at and say, uh, changes, changes, and otherwise we're okay. Any member of council can provide input to a function of the council, but again, the formal action must come from the council. Yeah, absolutely. Can't. I'm not disagreeing. Okay, thank you. Anyway, I, I keep bringing it up because I, I keep bringing it up and I just keep getting ignored, so I'll just bring it up again. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Councilman I Smith, no any old business? Uh, old business? I have no other old business. Councilman Smith? I'm good. Councilwoman Wildsmith? No old business. Deputy Mayor Quinn? None for me. And I have none. New business. I'll, I'll be leaving here in a minute. Uh, new business. Love you, bye. Councilwoman Wildsmith. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, just wanted to elaborate a little further on um, outdoor dining in Sparta and the temporary special use permit applications. I had Sam from Tantibachi just reach out this week regarding a plan that the, some of the businesses were trying to implement regarding um, dining on sidewalks and parking tables, uh, parking spots, tables on parking spots. So are they able to come into the town to specifically um, get those temporary special use permit applications? in those situations? Uh, Molly, um, it's, it's a little convoluted, but I'm going to let uh, our township engineer, Stan, give you a brief answer on that. Uh, council, Thank you. Councilwoman, as you point out, uh, t at tonight's uh, agenda, you adopted a Resolution 8-5. Uh, right. And, and, and that resolution essentially gives the township now the authority to provide relief from requirements that the town imposes to businesses so that these businesses have the opportunity uh, to use their own creativity in, 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 in the context of this pandemic to be able to get their doors open and to get customers in. Um, as, as you and the rest of council have been following all of the executive orders from the governor and all of the uh, restrictions and what and then now the loosening of those um, uh, we've been monitoring that uh, uh, through the township manager and his staff and when we first caught wind of some relaxation about a week ago on the requirements relating to retail and and dining uh, the township manager tasked the township attorney the board the planning board attorney the zoning board attorney uh, the land use administrator, zoning officer, and myself, the town engineer, to develop a methodology so that we could have it in place as quickly as possible to provide these businesses relief. 
so the action you took tonight will allow the businesses to apply for and obtain um, a special use permit. That's the terminology that's being used out there. It's, the, it's called a temporary special use permit for the relief from the township ordinances due to limitations on business operations during the COVID uh, pandemic. Now, what we did is we, we evaluated the governor's executive order 150. Uh, it was announced middle of last week. It came out on Saturday on the 3rd. Uh, what then came out subsequent to that were, were directives from the, um, from the Department of Law and Public Safety, Division of Alcohol, Beverage Control, uh, a special ruling establishing um, permits to expand liquor licenses. That's being managed by the state. Uh, at the same time, the, um, the, the Department of Health, through its commissioner, uh, Judith Persicelli, issued a, an executive directive that, uh, that related to protocols for food and beverage establishes, establishments offering service in outdoor areas pursuant to Executive Order 150. Uh, Mr. Close also made reference to the fact that as early as today, the County Department of Health, our, our, our health department, uh, issued uh, guidance and parameters uh, for these businesses to follow. The governor's Executive Order 150 allows these businesses to begin to operate outdoors um, on uh, June 15th. So what we've done is what you've done is you passed the resolution tonight that allows uh, uh, that allows uh, staff and I and I will be take I'll be spearheading this on on behalf of the township manager. Uh, the township manager has has advised me that he's looking to turn around these applications as quickly as possible, on average 48 hours, more quickly if we can. Obviously, if there's something a little more complicated, it may take us a little longer. Um, but we are prepared tomorrow morning to begin giving the public, giving our businesses uh, the form, working with them as to what they need to do. We've really stripped it down and made it extremely simple. There's no fee, uh, name, address, phone number, Describe what it is you're looking to do. Uh, give us a sketch or some sort of a diagram uh, with some dimensions as to how you're going to make it function. Uh, if, if our businesses are, are find it difficult, we're here to, to consult with them and help them get through the application process. Um, and then we will we'll take, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, stop by the site, make sure that we look at the site, make sure we understand it. Um, we expect a lot of creativity coming from these businesses, so I can't even tell you what they're going to do. I think every business is going to look at it individually. They're going to try to figure out what best suits their establishment, um, and then we will respond in a proactive manner, uh, helping them achieve it. Uh, our, our key concern is we want to make sure that we still are protective of public health uh, and safety, uh, not to say that we're assuming the responsibility of the health department. Uh, you know, our job is not to do their job, uh, nor is our job to do the, the you know, the alcohol, the ABC, the, the alcohol and beverage. Uh, however, we want to make sure that, you know, from a fire standpoint, you know, I'll be coordinating with the fire marshal. Uh, I'll be coordinating with the chief and his staff. I'll be coordinating with, uh, 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 with Maureen and Maureen Donnelly and the, the, the staff of, uh, of planning and zoning. Um, and um, Pat Stefanelli uh, in construction. Uh, we want to make sure that we cover our bases, but we want to do it quickly. We want to allow the, the businesses to get their permits so that they can begin getting their businesses open. And anyone that gets their permit, permit in early will certainly process it. My understanding is they cannot begin to operate outdoors until the 15th. That's the governor's decision. Uh, but we certainly don't want to be in a position where we hold them up. We want to help them get to that point. I hope that addresses your question. Stan, thank you very much for that um, great explanation, and I think that describes what we're doing better than um, the businesses just reading in a resolution and, and not clearly understanding what it's going to do for them in particular. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. And, and I'll be reporting to the township manager on a daily basis as to who and how many businesses have, uh, have made requests and our status of turning them around. Uh, because he wants this to be controlled very tightly so that 
we don't create any, any obstacles uh, 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 for the businesses to be able to do their, their work. Okay. Uh, and I really appreciate the staff being so accommodating and business friendly and working with our business community. And thank you to our Economic Development Committee because I'm sure they would have had involvement in that regard as well. So I will share that with uh, Sammy that communicated to me. And uh, thank you so much. Yes, and I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't recognize the Economic Development Committee. I know that Bill has been communicating with them directly and that was a lot of his uh, direction to us coming out of those communications. And Stan, just to reiterate, there's no fee? That's correct. No fee. That's what I heard clearly. Okay. No fee. You heard it here. Um, that's all I have for uh, new business. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Deputy Mayor, are you still there? I am still here. Um, I do need to leave you guys in a minute. I need to go pick up one of my kids, so I need to um, sign off. But um, I am still here right now, and I have no new business. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Chiarell. I guess I have a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to mention that I attended the rally on Saturday in Newton, and it was nice to see the county come together for that event. Um, number two, I did receive a uh, communication from a, um, a member of a uh, uh, citizen of the town um, alerting us, alerting me to something that I've witnessed myself um, as, as you pull into the, um, from the traffic, like I was coming, you know, in, uh, towards uh, Sparta from Lafayette, and you pull a left into the uh, North Village area at the traffic light, um, and then try to make a right into ShopRite. Uh, the Starbucks um, drive through uh, often backs up into that line, and I've even seen it back up into the sort of the main road there. Uh, not Route 15, but uh, whatever the crossroad is, I don't remember the name of the road. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's often uh, not, a, not a safe um, uh, experience right there. I understand a lot of it is because the dining room was, was closed, and so everybody's going to the drive through window, but um, there's not a lot of room for the cars that go in there. Um, I don't know what can be done about it, but I, I told the person I would bring it up and uh, mention it. And maybe somebody can look at it to a planning board, and maybe we can make a make a change to see if we can uh, ameliorate that uh, that condition. Okay, uh, Dan, I'd, I'd like to uh, let the chief weigh in on that, please. Mr. Close, did you have something to say? Um... Yes, thank you, Chief. Um, Councilman, first, uh, that information was provided to uh, Chief Spitaletto. I know he's been having patrols monitored, uh, as was just uh, identified. Uh, the planning board, uh, I think when they granted approval for this particular establishment uh, at that location, it was never intended that the drive through would be 100% of their business operation, which obviously during these unusual circumstances we're going through right now, uh, has certainly uh, led to some issues for them in terms of the patrons and the uh, traffic issue you just uh, referenced. Uh, but the chief has asked controls to look at that. I know they've worked uh, in doing so to try to help uh, ameliorate uh, the condition at times when they could. Uh, but I'll let the chief speak to that uh, specifically. So, chief. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Close. Yes, uh, Councilman, we have had a couple of reports of that. Uh, certainly, and we have been out there monitoring the situation. I know my officers have dialogue with the uh, the business itself. Um, you know, we're trying to provide a better flow uh, while you know the, the the closure is continuing. Of course, we're hoping, like everything else, that uh, once once that opens up, I'm sure it's going to alleviate the problem. But we're going to continue to stay on it and address it uh, to make sure that's as safe as possible out there and traffic is moving as smoothly as possible. I don't, I don't think the businesses are doing anything wrong. I don't think the, vehicle, the drivers are doing anything wrong. I think it's just a difficult situation, as you mentioned, that um, uh, manager closed that the we didn't get 100 percent of the business was going to be drive throughs but that doesn't make the problem not exist. So we, um, I don't know what can be done other than shoot people along or try to route the traffic a little bit differently. But um, but since everybody's aware of it, that's that was my point. Um, okay. Uh, and the last point I wanted to bring up is um, I, I, June is, uh, I believe, is LGBTQ Pride Month. Um, I believe we recognized it last month, uh, I mean, last year in Sparta, uh, the township. I hopefully we can do the same again this year by lighting up the, uh, the columns accordingly. And uh, that's all I have. 
Okay, thank you. Um, Councilwoman Smith. Um, so Molly is here. Um, I agree with Dan about letting the columns up for the rest of the month. Um, oh, we got graduation that we're lighting it for. That's also a great event. So on June 19th, we can light it up for graduation. Well, that, and, that uh, was for the, uh, I believe, the entire week, was it not? For um, Spartan Pride Week starting on the 13th, Spartan. so that Monday to Friday. Okay, well, there's yeah. lots of days in the month, so Captain maybe we could light it up in the rainbow now until the 13th, and then 13th to 19th to recognize our seniors, and then 20th onwards back to rainbow. But, you know, I'm just agreeing with Dan that, yes, we did um, light Town Hall up last year. Okay. Yep. Duly noted. Um, Councilman Smith, are you there? Duly, I'm here. No new business. And I have none. I'm going to open it up to the public. Seeing no one, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Motion, I'm going to sign off. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all.